Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host Paul, and I'm a simple man with simple needs. I see a Spider-Man 3 image, I make a bloody video. Now I do have a certain set of skills, skills that make me a nightmare for people like Kevin Feige, and throughout this video we're going to be breaking down all the ins and outs of the new leaked Spider-Man 3 set images and giving our theories on them. Is that, is, is that Harry Osborn? We'll, we'll get into it. Now, if you enjoy the breakdown, I'd love it if you showed some spider sense and click the thumbs up button and make sure you smash subscribe to stick around for the worst breakdowns on the web. I mean be I mean best, I meant best. Now, now as a thank you, we're giving away three copies of the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit 4K box sets to our subscribers, but I'll tell you more about how to enter that at the end of the video. Now, the photographs of the set were taken by Just Jared, and they show a lot of the ins and outs of not only the time setting, but also the suit and Peter Parker in full detail. Though the Webhead's costume is still carrying across the black and red colour design from last time, there's actually a minute change that brings it slightly more in line with the comics. We can now see that the belt has a much more angular shape to it, which is way closer to the classic design seen in the source material. Though it was angled slightly and far from home, it wasn't to this degree, and this shows that there has been some changes to it, but whether they address it or not in the movie, I really don't know. It, it, it's nice just to obsess over this type of stuff though, especially as I live in the UK, where the days of sun are doth a long distant memory, and we doused eat nout but gruel. Delicious gruel. I have to say though that this suit looks absolutely gorgeous, and I really hope they don't CGI over the top of it like they do in most of the MCU movies. I wish they would stop with this habit as it just ruins things, and yeah, let the costume designers work be displayed for once. Now the last time we saw Peter Parker, he was getting exposed like some army hammer DMs that outlined cannibalism, but with Peter it was much worse as he'd murdered everyone's favourite fictional superhero Mysterio. This was clearly happening in the summer, as even London looks sunny, and that only happens about four days a year. However, the leaked set photos clearly show snow and Peter Parker with slightly longer hair than how we saw him last time. I'm sure if the lad could grow a beard that he'd definitely have one too, and this is probably the most dishevelled looking that we've ever seen the character. It seems like he's been on the run from home for a long time, and with the movie releasing in December this year, it could be possible that the film itself is set at Christmas. It's an awesome time setting for movies, and if you've played the Miles Morales Spider-Man game, then you'll know New York looks absolutely incredible during this time of year. He's also wearing what looks to be an ACDC t-shirt under his shirt, and this was of course a band that Iron Man absolutely loved, showing how much he's taken up his mantle. Now Peter also has a bag over his shoulder, which I'm guessing he might be using to carry the suit or some of his fancy fancy books. In Homecoming his bag was stolen and then he was seen holding them walking home from school, so it could be possibly a similar situation here where he has to dump it, as the black and red suit scene is happening at the same location. Just Jared also caught Holland wearing a mask at one point, and a large overcoat like some Central Park trench coat flasher. I think this was to cover up the costume change, and also I, I have no idea what this blue mask is around his face. What's that? Is a pandemic going on here? Are you sure? I wish, I wish someone had mentioned that. Either way, we can gather from the photos that he's had a change of costume at some point, but where exactly is the place that he's heading to? Well, he's in fact going to the Peter Pan donut and pastry shop. I kinda imagine Kevin Feige showing up to set like, You idiots! His name's Peter Parker, not Pan! Or maybe that's just wishful thinking. No, but this does carry a lot with it, and I have a fan theory about exactly what's going on here. Now this is a real life location and it can be found in New York, but they've clearly dressed it up for winter, so I don't think it's too much of a reach to say that the name itself carries a lot of significance. We also know from the character announcements such as Dr. Octopus and Electro that the multiverse will become a big part of the film and that there will be multiple versions of Peter Parker in the movie. The deal with Tobey Maguire has reportedly been finalised and Andrew Garfield was confirmed as being part of the cast last month. Now I actually have a theory that they've purposely chosen the name Peter Pan because this may belong to another version of Peter Parker who's entered the main MCU timeline from across the multiverse and he's changed his name in order to lie low. Anyway, if one version of the webhead was hurtled across the multiverse, then they might try and avoid attention in the MCU and thus would change their name to Peter Pan, open a bakery store and just sell their hotcakes which are probably selling like hotcakes. Hey, you having that? I kinda wish that he was selling pizzas so I could do a pizza time meme every video, but some men just want to watch the world burn. 
Peter Pan is of course a character in fiction that lived on another world called Neverland and he travelled to Earth in order to get Wendy and her brothers. Thus, this other version of Peter might be playing on this fact and going under the name in order to pay homage to his backstory because hey, that's script writing 101 and everyone has to leave a clue. I'm looking at you Agatha Harkness, or, sh or should I say Agnes? Now, I think that Tom Holland's Peter might have learned about who this character is from Doctor Strange and that he will have gone to him in order to try and help defeating all the villains that are after him. Potentially Parker could arrive there in his regular clothes and then have to change into his costume when the bad guys show up. This would allow for both Peters to get into their costumes and team up to take down whoever's trying to collect the bounty on Parker's head. Now strangely enough, Tom's brother Harry Holland was also seen on set. Harry is actually an actor himself but he hasn't been announced as being cast in any roles. Now this opens the door to a lot of options and currently there are several people speculating that he may be playing Harry Osborne. Osborne and Peter, though not brothers in a literal sense, were very close and thus it does make sense to cast someone who looks similar to the actor if they want to lean into this aesthetic. However, I think more likely than not that this is simply a cameo role rather than something major. When actors are embarking on big projects back to back such as Holland, who pretty much left the set of Uncharted to come and film this movie, it's nice for studios to find a way to bring the fan back together, so they may have hired him to come on set for a couple of days so that he could spend quality time with his bro. Shoots like this pretty much kill your social life and I should know as a starred in Weapons of Ass Destruction 1-9 to and it's probably the only time that he's seen his sibling in quite a long time. Unless he's been having those quarantine parties, Tom. Don't make me cancel you. Now on top of this, I'm glad that the film is staying in New York. Going from summer to winter in the city likely means that he's remained there whilst people hunted him in a sort of John Wick 3 style. It was reported that Charlie Cox aka Daredevil has now finished filming his role in the movie and as he's the devil of Hell's Kitchen, it makes sense to remain here. With Civil War, Infinity War, Endgame and Far From Home all being set outside the city, I'm glad that we're finally getting the wall crawler back where he belongs as this is of course his home and it makes sense as that word home will likely feature in the title. Now for the moment there are of course a lot of theories but I do think that these ones line up quite a lot in terms of what we know about the film and of course the multiverse. Though no trailer seems to be on the horizon just yet, Elizabeth Olsen did state in her WandaVision interviews that there would be some handoff from the series to Spider-Man 3, so who knows, we may even get a post credit scene at the end of it that sets up the next events. Anyway, I'd of course love to hear your thoughts and theories on it, so make sure you comment below and let me know. As a thank you for interacting with the video, you'll be entered into a prize draw in which we're giving away 3 copies of The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings 4K box sets to our subscribers. All you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the video. The winners are going to be chosen at random on the 30th of January, so best of luck to everyone who takes part. Now the links to our socials are in the description and you can also support the channel by clicking the join button and as a thank you, you get videos like this early. We just created an Instagram account and would love to see you over there for cool behind the scenes images and more. Now if you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of WandaVision which will be linked on screen right now. We went through the entire episode from top to bottom and talked about all the easter eggs and cool things that you missed so it's definitely worth checking out if you want to know more. With that out of the way, thanks for sitting through the video, I've been Paul, you've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.